kind of wedging inward block that we've just used applied in kind of a more sort of grapply type context. So, Kieran wants to grab me, Kieran wants to drag me into himself. Either he's going to pick me up or he's going to headbutt me or something. But in doing this, Kieran is breaking my structure and now has a certain minimal control over me. Not as much as, let's say, this kind of clinchy thing that we did last week. Well, um, since But he has some control. So, the first thing I want to look at here is as Kieran pulls me towards him, I want to step in. That's all I'm doing. As I shuffle forward, step, boom. Okay, as I'm doing that, why don't I catch his hands? Why? If I move in and I hit Kieran in the face, which I'm allowed to do, if his hands are released, where is he going to go? And then he's gone. And then I smack him in the mouth, which is not going to knock him out, it's not going to diminish him, but it is going to piss him off. And I have no control over him. So, as I step in, trap the hands, as I trap the hands, wedge and hit the face. Boom. Okay? From here, pull the elbow back to collapse him. Hit him in the face. Hit him in the face. All the one elbow. You will note, do you remember last week, where we did this kind of a motion here? Whoa. That kind of little wrist grab that we used? It's the same one. So as Kieran pulls me in, grab the wrist, step in, hit him in the face. From here is too far away, I can't hit him with anything else. I've already locked that one out. So, bring him closer, hit him in, hit him out. Yes? Give that a go. Everyone's happy enough with that? Okay. So, actually we'll go this way. Kieran pulls me forward as I step forward anyway. Hit him in the face. Now, you may notice, in some cases, and not every time I do it, I end up either with a shin check or a foot sector, or even a knee bubble. These are lovely. If you find them, you find them. You don't, don't look for them. Because if you end up scrabbling around down here, something awful is bound to happen up, up there as you're distracted. So let us add something to this. King grabs me, I move in, I hit him. From here I collapse his distance, I clap him in the face once, I clap him in the face again. We can now assume, having eaten a punch and two elbows, Kieran is diminished. So we can now look at actually locking him up. The hands will more than likely release. If they do not, keep hitting him until they do. Same answer as always. So, elbow goes down, hand goes here. Two hands on the back of his shoulder, and look at my feet. Whoa. Okay? This is a very, very simple shoulder angle. So from here, pop. Pop, pop, pop. My hand wants to go under his arm. This is weak. This is strong. Okay? Stop there, or do you want to continue? Stop there, continue. I continue. Okay? So from here, this is a, a halfway decent lock. This is not going to hold Kieran all day, but if Kieran applies power, it encumbers him. Now, if he's very, very inflexible, it will hold him all day, but no one here is that inflexible. So don't rely on this one. You can fold if you want to apply pressure to the wrist. You can grab on, which is what I recommend. Knee the face, step back. Knee the face, step back. Knee the face, step back. And finally, come up through the body and land forward. Okay? Happy enough? Go. So we've started, we've gone one, which I'll explain the rest of the knees, two, three. The reason we do them that way is, if you have a look at the way the first knee comes off, it's going to come off really, really hard. But if I just sit there doing this, this will turn into the can-can, and eventually you'll find yourself doing this, as your musculature tries to move around itself as it gets tired. Instead, if we, like, like a sprinter, look at a runner, we spring off that back foot, and then we drop it and reload the other one. That too can spring, and every knee we fire will come off as strong as the first one. We have a look at the last one. It comes up, it hits him in the chest. This is really more just to move him structurally. This won't do a huge amount of damage. As we step far, look at the way my hips turn. Boom. So as I step, I turn, and that shrugs him off. All this is doing is, you know, if we want to engage in high fantasy, we could say that, you know, this kind of gets his corpse off you after you've defeated him. No. You've hit him a few times, he's now going to be a bit dizzy. This just gets him off you and away from you long enough to get you out of it. 
were you to do something like try and bring him down, you'd still be around your legs. So what you're looking for is get off and leave. This is what we're doing here. So give that a shot. If you guys want to practice with the knees with a little bit more contact, if you put an arm across your torso like that, so we don't throw them at the head, put an arm across your torso, you'll find that you can throw these in. And he can tell you roughly how meaty they are, all with no risk of injury. Okay? So give that a shot. Something kind of maybe a novel concept, which is what the Germans would refer to as a transport technique. So let us pretend I have here in the and instead of wanting to hit him in the face and put him down here, maybe I want to bring him over there. So, as we've already said, this lock isn't fantastic. There are a couple of hundred different variations of it. None of them are particularly amazing. But you can quite easily kind of tweak this one so that it works out a lot better. What you want to do is you want to put their head up against your thigh. You want to bring your hand all the way through and put it in your pocket. And depending on how inflexible they are, you'll see their body will move around to about there. So Karen would have kind of white inflexible shoulders, some would have more so, but this will work on all. Once you put your hand in your pocket and their leg against, or their head against your leg, you can kind of walk them wherever the hand you want. And thus they are transported. So, want to see that again? You happy enough? Once more? Other side? This, yes, this is the other side. Still doing it on the same side. <laughs> Come on, slap this kid. I knew what I was doing. So, we are to here. What I'm now looking to do, James, what I'm now looking to do is put his ear on my thigh and my hand in my pocket. You will see they will eventually move around to a position that is most comfortable for them, and that's fine, because it's still bloody uncomfortable. And then as I walk, they will follow. Happy? Go. Give that off. With a transport technique from the top, Karen pulls in, step in, pull, hit the face, collapse them in, flip the jaw in the other way, from here, drop. Bring them into the shoulder room. From here, as we know, Head to, head to uh, thigh and hand in pocket. From here, just to put the rest of this on, do this very, very carefully. So you see Kieran is in an amount of discomfort there, not a huge amount. But if I pull his chin, watch your fingers and the teeth, look at his feet. Okay? And that's what you're looking for. So, very, very carefully, hook the chin, stand up straight, and walk. Okay? Be very, very vigilant. If you're, as soon as your partner taps, release the chin. You're not trying to shrug the arm off, you'll dislocate the shoulder. Let them squiggle out at themselves. Go. What we're going to take a look on, a look at again, is the idea of deflecting. So, our initial kind of our warm up exercise tonight was off the straight punch, this sort of wedging block here. That is a deflection, that's not a flat block. But you know, a block could be something like a hook punch where you just boom, stop the arm straight. In this case, we deflect it. So, we're going to go back to looking at the deflecting bit of the wedge. <coughs> Classically, this technique would be taught off something like a long punch stepping through in at the midline. So, for the sake of making life easy on us, we'll train it off that, and then we can kind of relax it up in a second. Okay? So what we're looking for is Kieran is going to move, step through and punch me wow, on a low line, be it solar plexus, be it belt buckle, whatever. Happens all the time. So all I want to do, the first thing I want to do is step off. You can see I'm not stepping far. What I'm not doing is this or anything of the sort. Nor am I running halfway across the road. So, Kane punches me, I step off. As I step off, I'm going to perform this blocking motion. So, if we were to be really kind of hard style about this, do you know, it would be something like, wow! Realistically, you don't need that. You're not stopping direct force, you're just deflecting it. So it's more than sufficient to just do that. Boom. Open fingers, close fingers. This is up to you, figure out what you prefer. Okay? As all of that happens, I was talking to one of you guys earlier about the idea of attacking and defending. If Kieran punches me, just straight, straight punch the face. If I block and then I hit him, or I block and then I hit him, or whatever, I block and I hit him. That's two counts. 
one beat to, to block, one beat to attack. So what I want to do here is attack, block and move all in the same beat, which is handy because it's been done by three different bits of my body. So it's very, very cheap. So the legs move me, my right hand uh, blocks, and as all that happens, my left hand attacks. So, for safety, you may do this as a palm shot to the face. In reality, it's a poke in the eyes. What it isn't is a great big eye gouge. It is just designed to provoke that bastard reaction. Okay? So, punch comes in, step off, boom. Hit him. Go to there. Get it right. This is fiddly, so get it right to there. Go. Look at the details. Uh, where this work? Where this work? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Sharp for the golf ball tonight. Punch comes in. Look at my feet. This is called a cat stance. Okay? In this case, normally you, you may say, can you step back to a cat stance or something? In this case, I'm actually stepping off, stepping that way, and then facing you guys in the cat stance. Okay? From this cat stance, it allows me to block but also to reach in with my attack. If I just do kind of a standard step up, I will still block adequately, but my attack won't reach it. Then I would need to rotate through and then diminish my defense. So can stand, the cat stance will accomplish both of these in this particular case. Pay a little attention to that. The other thing we're going to talk about is, as it, if you want to make this a little friendlier or more palatable, by all means call the eye jab a palm shot of some sort. But the reality is that the smaller among you will not make this work at this moment with this punch. So you do need to gently poke the eye to create that fleet response. That's what you want to do. So, let us presume I have now distracted. Okay? The arm is currently palm down. I need to rotate it to palm up. As I rotate the arm to palm up, I step forward and put his arm under my arm. Weave my arm through and grab my own wrist. Yeah? So this go to figure four because it makes a number four. Yep. Yeah? So from here, we step up. May pop that again, rotate, grab your own wrist. Now, if I then hold down with my hands, it will put some mild pressure on his arm. But he still has structure. And I have this. The trick here is to give myself more structure. Him less. So, drop down, lift him on his own arm. Now it's his body weight doing work. Okay? So, I'll show you how to get into the lock, but then basically I'll need to come around and kind of we'll feel our way through it together. So, all together. So, one, turn, drop, lift. Okay? This is a transport technique. Our story does not finish here, it finishes, let's say, over here. Okay? Do that. Okay, so, if we have a look at it again. The way we were taught this technique was, my forearm must be exactly behind his elbow. My forearm is behind his elbow, and then my position must be strong. I go up, and I go down, and it goes up. Take that scandal. Which is fine if I'm roughly the same size, which is even better if I'm about twice as big and twice as heavy. What falls down a little when A, his arms are particularly long, or B, his arms are particularly strong. But what's kind of become apparent to us as time has gone on is, so this is my ideal position. I'm behind his elbow, this now hurts. If I drop down like I told you guys to, get the arm roughly vertical, it hurts, yeah? But even if I shift my forearm to about here, which is clearly suboptimal, I am now not on his elbow. Assuming I can get that straight arm, so let us again fantasize that the palm of death creates a straight arm as well, as an unforeseen side of it um, that only came out in trials. If I drop down, as long as I have his arm straight and roughly vertical, if I can prop his body weight on it, it has pretty much the same effect. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's not as good, but it still works which is a damn sight better than, oh shit. Okay, what I want you guys to do is do this just with a little bit more smoothness and energy. What I really want you to do is take it easy on each other's elbows. So, and once you get this up, move them. Once you move them, short them off, and go back. Just add some transport into the transport technique, okay? Cool. 
Let us construct a very, very broadly hypothetical scenario here. Instead of our traditional kind of gut punch, let's go for some sort of a wrist grab, a waist grab, or something like that. So, as I'm trying to grab my wrist, I'm going to step off, carry it off. From here, we're in familiar territory. Once I have him in this transport position, he's now going to try and grab me. And all I'm going to do is use the head for a couple of seconds as a human shield. Okay? At whatever certain points, uh, at whatever point I reach, I'm very right side of something to wrong. Shut the head off. We go through it. Just simply to illustrate what we're doing, or rather to make the transport more dynamic, and now to get rid of this as our initial feed. So, make it a wrist grab, make it a direct wrist grab, so Kev's going for my left wrist, and in doing so as I step off, there's my parry there. As I'm parrying, everything else is as we left it, and then at this point, either make threes or just pretend that you have someone else, and start using this person as a shield. Now, God knows this will not protect you from more than a heartbeat or two, if ever, but it does very, very nicely illustrate what we're trying to do with transport. Go. Let us now look at the technique that we would call checking the storm. Where a stick is a storm, we're going to check it. My stick, no. Um, put here in my head. Okay, again, please abstract for a moment. This is not a trained stick fighter. No trained stick fighter would feed this way and then leave it dangling there for you to kick the head off. Nevertheless, let's work off that. It's a straight down shot. The important part of this technique is the feed. I know you will want not to hurt your partners. We are using snack sticks. They're quite soft and you can take a fairly decent wallop of these with no injury. So, having said that, he's actually bent it off me. <laughs> having said that, please now feed with a level of commitment. So again, we're going to step off into that cat stance there. As we're going to do that, lock, lock, okay? So, I didn't contact his arm in either case now. This is fine. This is absolutely fine. There's no reason for me to be chasing his hand to touch it. If I manage to get the hell out of the way of it, and not contact his arm, I'm laugh. Okay? So from here, one little kick in the knee, turn, other little kick in the knee. Smack him in the face. Okay? So, one, one, two, three. three. Stick is still here, you are here. If he happens to leave it dangling up here, like a helpful young lad, then by all means maintain a check when you hit him. If it's gone way down there, that's fine. Just keep an eye on it. Monitor. If he tries to bring it back up, then you get to cropping and stuff like that. Which is well beyond what we're doing here. So let us presume a naive set or untrained attacker here. So, one, two, three, boom. Go to there, okay? Get the feed right. Make sure, sorry. You are aiming to split someone down the middle with your stick, otherwise there is no point in doing this technique. Go. Let's have a quick look at one or two of the details. If Rania is dropping a straight vertical line, number 13, we can absolutely do this. But if Rania decides to throw in a steep kind of number one line, as I step off, it will follow me. So we need to get these hands moving. How are we doing on the cat stands? Are we happy with that? It's basically just Side step off and leave this one pointing slightly forward so that then you can counter attack fluidly from it. Let's look at our hands. Like I said, so the Iranian part decides to drop into kind of a, a number one, like a 45 or a steep number one, 63 line. I need two hands off there. So why am I doing this? You'll have seen this in things like traditional karate, where you get this kind of one, two. So, there are many, many different theories and many, many different reasons why you would do this. Personally, in our system, the main reason we would is because where this arm, my main blocking arm, has this massive distance to cover, it simply might not be good. So instead, one, two. This one is quicker. It will shoot straight across your body for the body a bit of time. It's not time to lock the big one. In this case, you are not locking big hammering blocks there. All they are, as they go there, all they are is little taps, boom, boom. From here, kick, kick, walk. So, are we good to that? Let's add something to this, okay? Let us pretend to Let us pretend that we have checked there, we've kicked, we've kicked, we're coming in. In this case, instead of uppercutting her here, 
we're going to uppercut it under our elbow. Do this really slowly. Okay? Get that shape? Cool. So, we'll do it from the other side. So, one, two, kick, kick, turn. So, the palm is facing upwards. So, we're going to the elbow. Get that shape. So, from here, do you remember a couple of weeks ago? We did this hip throw, didn't we? We're going to do something quite similar, just under the arm. Now, for your own safety, in the dojo, leave the arm nice and curly. In reality, on that street that you can be talking about, where street fights happen, leave the lock up. So, from here, bring her over, throw her, bring her down. Okay? Happy to there, do you want the last question? Happy to there, happy to there. Go. Quick. So, calf swing, step off. One, two, step up. Bang. I'm going to retain the lock because I'm just brilliant. I land here. From here, for whatever reason, I need to go that way. So, see the way his arm is that way? Bring it across this knee, yeah? Now, if you think that I'm going to break his arm, you're wrong. Also, his meringue. Arms don't break this way. Put his arm across my knee, as I do. Flip him over. He will land on his front, as he does. I'll just keep him on his front. As he does, you're now in this position. Put your knee in on top of your shoulder, and step forward with the other leg. Okay? Thank you. the staff. Kneel on the back. Put this into the crook of your hip. And step forward. So this allows me to control him. He's less flexible and might even get a lock out of it. All the while I have hands free. I'm not going to fiddle around that one. You then obviously have the usual array of pick me ups. Okay? Give that a shot. Go. Yeah. 